Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Northampton Urban Forestry Commission meeting, April 6, 2022. Uh, we have two guests uh, from the, well, I, I don't know if I can call Councillor Jarrett from the general public, but yes, uh, we have Councillor Jarrett's here and we have uh, Nathan Fortin. Is that, a, is that how you say it, Nate, Nate Fortin? Yeah, Nate Fortin. And I wanted to thank everyone for letting me pop in. And this is for uh, Richard Harper's class and uh, just on public meetings. And I want to say thanks for, for letting me view this. And uh, I'm just going to be taking some notes along the way and uh, seeing how things get done. Well, welcome. It's good. It's good. Nice to have you. And uh, please, if you have needed to answer, uh, if we have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Thanks um, for coming. Yeah. Uh, so that, I guess that, uh, Councillor Jarrett, you have a, yes, please go ahead, Councillor Jarrett. Thank you. Uh, great to be here. I want to thank you all for your work. Uh, I just saw the press release about the Arbor Day events this month, um, and they are inspiring. Um, later on the agenda, you'll be discussing the significant tree ordinance. Um, and I'm interested in that ordinance and updating and strengthening it. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on it and specifically your thoughts on um, reducing the threshold of when it applies uh, and also the calculation uh, for the cost, because you know, if we look at each inch that is added to the diameter of a tree does not add the same amount of mass, uh, depending on how old the tree is. A bigger tree, you add an inch, it's, it's adding a lot more than a young tree. Um, so I'm curious about that. I'm not, I can stick around for that. Um, I'm not sure if you'll be having a dialogue with members of the public at that time, but if you are, I'd be happy to do that. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, no one else from the public presently. Okay. So, uh, review and approve the minutes of 316 2022. I, I just sent you the minutes a little while ago. Uh, I don't know if any of you had a chance to read them, but please take some time to read them uh, if you wouldn't mind. Um, I had a question about the third bullet point under the um, city, the um, Main Street redesign. Um, the wording is a little, I didn't understand. It said, um, Rich feels there are three points that need to be met on this project. Um, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure what that meant, or I don't remember what exactly you said at the last meeting about that. I think it's three points. Does that make sense? It was three points. Sorry about that. I oh. had two different, um, I had a little mix up with the drafts today. Sorry about that. So there was two okay. different. Oh, okay. Three points. Okay. So the three, the three, sorry, the, excuse me, the three points I think are underneath that. So yes, it's three points. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good too. I'm good.
Yeah, Rob is good too. And I wasn't at the meeting, so it's all right. Th thank you. Um, but I have a motion to accept. Um, oh, I'm not I'm quite done. Hold on. Oh, I'm sorry, Marilyn. I didn't hear. I apologize. That's all right. I'm a slow reader. No, that's that's all good. Don't worry. Um, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Everyone else? Oh, all set. Um, could I make a motion to accept the minutes as amended? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, no discussion. Okay. Deb, can you take a roll call vote, please? Adley. Rich? Uh, yes. Jen? Yes. Susan? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Rob? Yes. Molly? Yes. And David, are you abstaining? Because Yeah, because I wasn't at the meeting. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, tree warden, chair tree warden report. Um, in the minutes, I noticed that I was supposed to provide all of you with the uh, our statement about the Main Street redesign. So it is on my screen, it's behind the Zoom meeting. I don't wanna take the Zoom meeting down, but I will send it to you. Um, I did not put it on the agenda and that's my uh, mistake. I think that it was asked to be an agenda item for this meeting. Although if we have time, we can discuss it at the end of the meeting if you wanna review it. If not, I'll send it to all of you and we can discuss it at our next meeting. Don't you wanna do a screen share? Uh, I can do a screen share, but I think if we're gonna do it, I can do it. We, we to do it at the end of the meeting if we have time. But Molly, okay. we put off your spotter lantern fly update like for the last two or three meetings. Oh, I, I want to make sure that <laughs> we have a little bit of time. So okay. Um, it's not really an update, but discussion. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a discussion. So uh so I reached out to Julie Coop about the Tree City USA in person award ceremony. I do not have an answer for you on that if we we're going to have one. I know Marilyn was inquiring the last meeting. Um, I did have a um, Zoom meeting with Stephanie Weir from Tool Design in regards to the Main Street redesign. Uh, she was asking for information uh, to basically better understand the role, I guess the, the difference in the role between the tree warden and the Urban Forestry Commission um, in regards to commentary on uh, the design and species selection, et cetera for the project. So I talked to her at length and tried to explain to her that, you know, I am the tree warden, but the Urban Forestry Commission, and I basically have walked together on this project and continue to do so. Um, obviously we can't necessarily decide certain things about the project, but we definitely, we have input about the tree species. We have input about um, the type of uh, soil they're gonna be using, soil profile. Um, I also talked to her about the existing trees on Main Street that may stay um, and basically how we would move forward in determining um, the viability of those trees, considering the amount of construction that's going to happen around them. So what I said, and she also had, she reiterated, she had a conversation with Mass DOT landscape architect, who was actually working on the project for Mass DOT. Had uh, so very similar questions. So I think what I'm going to try to do is meet with them in the future to actually walk Main Street and look at every single tree that we that we are anticipating that we're going to keep mm -hmm. and determine the level of construction around each tree and then determine, um, you know, if, if it's viable to actually keep the tree based on the amount of construction. Um, so that will happen probably sometime, I'm hoping in June, but um, I, I, don't have a, I don't have a time frame for that. 
So I'm uh, here, welcome to participate in that meeting. I don't know exactly when it'll be, I'll let you all know. But I think it's gonna be an interesting, it's an interesting, it's, I'm glad we're doing it because I, what I'm concerned about is that if we, you know, if we determine we have, you know, some trees on Main Street are gonna to have to be removed and there's gonna be, I'm sure some type of uh, commentary um, in regards to the removal of the trees versus planting new trees and the benefits the existing trees provide, et cetera. So we wanna make sure that we are very clear on the reason why we're removing the trees or we decided not to save them uh, so I, I don't, you know, we need to have more data, I think, to express that in such a way that hopefully people will be satisfied. Um, but again, it's like our, it's our once in a lifetime chance to actually beautify Main Street uh, and, and have public input and input from the commission and, and uh, Main Street for everyone and other folks. Um, Molly, you had your hand up. Yeah, um, I forget if we talked about this before, but is there any... Is it at all feasible to um, remove the trees and put them in the nursery for a while and then put them back in, or is that just they're just going to die? If we do that. So some of the smaller trees that we've planted probably recently, we could do that, but the larger trees that are um, that are like not in the way of the actual project, whether it's a piece of infrastructure such as uh, the the new uh, dedicated bike lane, et cetera. Those trees, they'll probably be too large to be saved. Mm. Um, so again, I, that's why I want to spend some time and walk around and better understand how what how much level of construction will be around them. Um, I also kind of uh, you know, there's other things that we talked about too. About she she was very inquisitive about the uh, grow bag method of tree planting versus the B and B. So she's been mainly involved in B and B plantings uh, and design work through tool. So she was curious as to how successful we were planting uh, grow bags. Um, and I just kind of explained to her that whole process and how we found that um, we've, we've been more successful planting grow bag trees and bare root trees than we have, uh, you know, to try to transfer or plant large B and B trees just to say that now we have, uh, you know, like an adolescent tree. So, so there was a, it was a good discussion. So I'm glad she reached out to me and I'm gonna keep this dialogue open and I'll just keep you apprised of any other conversations that, that I may have. Um, I don't really have, yeah, Jen. I just have to say that is huge. That is huge to get a landscape architect yeah. who, you know, they just, they're good at what they do. I'm not, you know, disparaging landscape architects, but they just don't have a lot of training in like horticulture and plant species, really, you know? So for her to be questioning, you know, the standard is these giant ball and burlap trees, giant. And then a lot of times they die in several years because you just can't keep them alive because it's not enough roots for the top. And so I, I, you know, kudos to her and to you. And I'd be really interested in um, doing that walk with you if I can figure out how to do it. So, yeah. Well, maybe it'll be after your little uh, maybe. foray into the. <laughs> <laughs> we can only hope. Um, the other update I want to give you quickly is that I I am uh, anticipating that um, I'm going to need all of your assistance in working with the folks on Warfield Place in one form or another. Um, the way it looks now is that Warner Brothers, the contract for the project on Warfield Place is not complete. They have to come back and do a bunch of finish work. I don't have a timetable for their, their, con their construction timetable. Their contract expires to June 30th, so I imagine they will be done probably the last day of June, <laughs> right. which, uh, which typically is the way it works, uh, unfortunately. Um, so this means that the planting on Warfield Place with the residents and Tree Northampton and the UFC would happen in the fall. So in the interim, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to um, reach out to uh, Councillor Moulton, who is the ward councillor. Uh, and I've been in communication with the mayor over this uh, to, to try to uh, communicate with the residents uh, in the near future about this. So we can actually work with them uh, to you know, select the planting date uh, planting uh, tree species, et cetera. So I, I will probably end up wanting to meet uh, with them uh, in person on the street to discuss all this, but I'm, 
Um, I've got to find a way to communicate with them all first, but I'm trying to uh, work uh, with their new, the new ward counselor as well to get their, uh, his input. So I'll keep you posted on where we're at with that, but that's the tentative plan. And just for clarification, Rich, the, the Warfield place, this is the uh, replacement of the nine cherry trees? Yeah, it's going to be a replacement of the nine, the nine trees plus additional trees planted on the other side of the street that will be um, medium to large trees in their maturity. So they'll have a much broader canopy on the street. Mm -hmm. So, but I, because of the construction timetables and the delays of uh, material availability, I, I don't know when Warner Brothers is going to be back, but they will be back right before the June 30th deadline to finish. So they, they can, uh, I don't think they're going to ask for an extension of their contract unless something happens. But any other questions? Oh, okay, uh, I don't have anything else. So we can move on to the Rotary Club in service day slash Arbor Day update. And Sue, I'm going to let you take this one away if you don't mind. Okay. Um, I've been working with Barbara Devlin, as has been Rich. Um, there is a robust force of um, volunteers signed up both for this Saturday and next Saturday. Um, True Northampton had um, a few leaders um, cancel. Um, so um, if you're comfortable leading a group, we, we do need another leader or two Saturday morning on um, Green Leaves Drive rain or shine and um, with rotary volunteers. So um, I think they're gonna bring some coffee and donuts and water and things like that to make it a little more festive. We'll have check-in and then um, a abbreviated demonstration so that we don't cut into the time too much. And then we'll be planting with them and then again then um so that's the trial run this saturday april 16th is a much more elaborate all hands on deck if you can um it's saturday morning again we're going to be at two different sites which is always challenging because it's always nice to have you know rich with us um to look at roots or whatever issues may come up um but we'll be at two sites, Ryan Road School and at um, JFK, I'm sorry, um, Jackson Street School. So if anybody else would like to help, we would really like to have you and to provide leadership. And um, I don't think I'm skipping anything. Does that sum it up, Rich and Rob? Rob's been working hard on this too. Molly? Um, what time are you meeting on Saturday? Um, just before 9 a.m. if you wanted to come. I, I can do both. I texted um, Vicky? Rob. I texted Vicky. Rob about the 16th for sure. And then I, I can do this Saturday. Oh, Jen, that'll be wonderful. Yep. Yeah. Greenleaf Street? Yeah. Okay. Greenleaf Drive. Drive. And um, it's between 20 and 70, the address, but um, it's, it's one of those wide new streets. So if you come up Greenleaf Drive, you're going to have trouble missing or, you know, the yellow vests and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I can be there too. I could lead one of those teams if you want. All right. Then we got. Oh, Molly. Jen. Molly. So Molly the ninth. Okay. Yeah. Terrific. Thank you so much. So it, I think it's going to be a lot of fun and um, we'll bundle up and do it. Even it, it's probably, you know, going to be drizzly and things. But <laughs> I've been pressed on the rotary and an email went out to them all today that we plant rain or shine unless it's absolutely torrential, unsafe rain, we will be planting. So we'll all bundle up because it's going to be chilly. So oh, I, I want to add, if I could, that this is kind of exciting because we're, oh, two or three weeks ahead of ourselves from our usual start date. So we're really jumping in 
uh, early. Rich has uh, been trying to thaw out the root balls. I hope that's going well, Rich. Um, and, and, uh, and just to acknowledge, this has been a real heavy lift on Rich and his staff. A, the date starting earlier, the multiple sites on the 16th, and um, the um, a, a lot of extra communication, a lot more commu extra communication and different parties involved. Um, and David, thank you very much for all the support in um, getting the schools involved in your role in that and getting the, the site plans is really extraordinary. Of course, Rob as well, as <laughs> always doing a gazillion things that nobody ever really sees and just get done. Yeah, David and Rich and I have been working on this with Sue and also Vicki for a while. When you do a big planting like this, it's it's extra work because there's a lot of coordination and and on Rich's end, just to get the stock in place, you know, it takes a special amount of effort. It's kind of like having a big party as opposed to just making dinner. Tree Northampton had an inquiry for some students in West Hampton who want to plant a tree at their school. And I wrote a long email. These are all the steps. <laughs> Start with the principal, school, superintendent, school board, all the different permissions, the transfer of property to the school from, in our case, the DPW, uh, the scheduling. There's uh, so many steps. And Barbara's been really helpful too, but um, everybody, thank you. Yeah, I, I was able to speak with uh, Tony Kuzmiris from the school department and uh, they waived uh, um, the gift issue and that, that whole form. So David, thanks for coming over here and bringing the form, but we didn't have to use them in the end uh, because the inventory is already owned by the city. So it's just, uh, it's not considered a gift, it's city property that exists. Oh, all right, good. So, uh, thanks, I was gonna ask you about that. I no, that, that thank you. For it. And then um, the other uh, on uh, Friday, the 20, 29th, I'm getting the date right. I hope it's actual the Arbor Day tree whip giveaway where we have 600 tree species. We'll, we'll be giving away in front of City Hall for the 29th and the 30th. And then we are uh, hoping to plant uh, multiple trees over at our Kingdom Field in Florence as part of our Arbor Day planting on the same Friday which would be bare root stock, which I'm working to uh, get, get the list finalized. I'm uh, working with some kids from the um, Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School who wanna, wanna help. Looks like they'll be, they have that afternoon off. So they, or that day off, I'm sorry, not morning, I guess we'll do it. Do you have to speak Chinese? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, they're an environmental club and they worked with us last year mm. and um, they were in touch. We want, we're raring to grow. So like, okay, how about they're, Arbor Day? They're, they're a great group. They actually uh, emailed me a couple of weeks ago and they have a uh, environmental project and they wanted, they wanted me to do, do a little podcast with them. So I did a podcast with them. Oh, wow. part of their, I, I never saw the finished product of everything else, but they interviewed me and why I wanted why I wanted to be a tree warden and it's like well I, you know you, you're not you're not really born like you know you don't think about being a tree warden it just sort of like happens and yeah uh, so but anyways it was really nice it was about ten minutes long um, so it was it's just really nice to connect with young people today because I really I think the average age of volunteers is uh, definitely not in the teens we're more probably closer to our age so. Um, and I'm saying that loosely because we're all different ages, I get that. Uh, but I think that uh, it's really important to engage young people um, in every facet of um, this whole urban forestry initiative that many communities have taken, taken on, on it, uh, themselves in, in different ways. And, you know, uh, we had, this is what we're passing on to all these, all these young folks. And so we need someone to, we need them to actually um, kind of basically, you know, get the shovel, dig in the ground and, 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 you know, do the work to get, to get this continual, the good work that we've done, uh, and, then, and other people have done as well. So, um, and then, uh, you know, after, after Arbor Day, um, I don't think we're going to plant on Saturday, but I, that's still up for discussion. 
Um, but I, we will, you know, a full size planting, but I think we'll have a discussion about that. Um, we'll, we'll have the tree giveaway going on that day. Yeah. So, um, but probably no planting. Then can just to us. Well, oh, I'm sorry, Rich. Uh, we're planting on the 29th, right? Yes, we're planting on the Friday because our Canem field is going to be utilized by a bunch of sports teams on Saturday. Right. So Friday's the ideal day where we can actually get in there where people can park in the parking lot, et cetera. So it, it makes it a lot easier. And then um, I just wanted to double check, Jen, are you bagging the whips? Or are you working with, uh, okay, so you're, you, okay. So I'll just, you, when they come in, just communicate with me. I'll drive to you, pick them up. Right. Um, if I can get the compost and I'll just put everything in my truck, I'll drive it to my school. We will do it all. I'll do it all with my students and right. then um, I'll deliver them whatever day you want them back. Okay. All right. And I have a cooler, you know, we have a cooler at school. I could, we could, you know, bundle them up and keep them in the cooler if that's what you want or whatever. Okay. Can do. All right. Yeah, they're I, supposed to be delivered on the 25th of April. Okay. I think I have that in my calendar. Sometimes they'll be, uh, they'll be that day or the day after, but they're pretty good typically. Yeah, that, that Monday. Yeah. So I can just, just tell me when they come and I'll meet yeah. you wherever you want to meet me and, or if it's yeah. easier to drop them on my port, whatever. But okay. I probably am going to need compost. Um, yep. Yeah, we have all that here. So so I, we could load just up. load it in the back of my pickup. Yep. It doesn't fit. I, can, I have a pickup and I can juggle around um, work. Okay. Um, does anyone have any other questions about the Arbor Day Rotary Club plantings? Did everyone see the press release that I forwarded to you? Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. That, that's great. Uh, Sue, thank you for Sue really put a lot of effort into making that, crafting that. Um, and then um, went off to the mayor's office and the mayor had a, a nice uh, statement in there, which was great. So um, um, let's see. Okay. So no other questions. I guess we will go to our main body of discussion, which is going to be the STO. So uh, I sent you a um, Word document with a clean version of the STO, of all the edits that we have been working on and open during our you know, public meetings for the last, I don't know how long this is, how long we've been doing this, like for a year, it seems like. Feels like it. Yeah, More than a year. It, it, it feels like a year. Although I, I think being on the Zoom and probably Councilor Jarek can probably admit to this, it's sort of like it's, you're not moving from one place to another. So it seems like it's like Groundhog Day all over again sometimes. <laughs> so it's kind of, it's kind of hard, but so. Um, you all have a copy, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to screen share the same copy. Uh, so, Councillor Jared, if everyone's okay, if we can take questions from Councillor Jared. I think that would be great. Um, so we can have a dialogue about this, to, so he can understand where we're coming from and ask questions. Um, let me just do a screen share. Uh, hold on one second. Try this again. My apologies. Okay, can everyone can everyone see that? Yes. Okay. I can see everyone. All right. So basically, what I did is. Um, The, the things that are highlighted in yellow are things that I specifically um, wanted to talk about because these, these are things we didn't talk about at our previous, we did talk about them in previous meetings, but we didn't talk about them in the last meeting um, where we this, where we basically were going to, uh, the last meeting that David was here, so it was probably the first uh, meeting in March. So the first meeting in March, we basically came up, we talked quite a bit about um, let me just go in a little more here. We talked quite a bit 
about this uh, E replacement and the DBH, et cetera. So that is in red. The reason that's in red is because I think that that wording needs to be uh, clearly defined. I don't think it's clearly defined. Basically, I think the way it should read is that replacement shall be calculated so that so for each inch of diameter or breast height of the removed tree, um, there shall be replacement of equal amount. So basically, we're saying instead of half the DVH, which is presently, we're saying we want inch for inch replacement at diameter or breast height. So I needed some input on that. And then um, the areas in yellow, I'll go back up to the procedures. So this is in the zoning uh, ordinance and procedures where there's definitions. Um, one of them talks about inventory of any trees or this is the procedure that they have. So I originally had this in, um, in yellow. I had this in the original draft that we brought to planning and sustainability and planning sustainability did not want this yellow commentary in there because mm -hmm. they felt that the inventory really at that point, so when a developer is actually working on a project and they're bringing it to um, Carolyn for their initial application and they have an inventory, um, it could be inventory by basically uh, like a landscape architect or it could be inventory even by the developer themselves that would not have to have these types of qualifications. Um, however, um, farther down in the document, there are, it does talk about um, arborists, it does talk about tree risk qualified arborists, et cetera. Um, and I, disagree, I personally disagree with um, planning and sustainability on this. I think that we actually on the get-go need to know exactly what assets are on this piece of property so we can better understand um, what kind of tree it is, its location, its size, because obviously the size is very important if we're gonna be replacing trees that have to be removed. Um, its condition, which is important because we need to know the condition of the tree. So if, if the developer says that I need to take down these five trees and three of them are in poor condition and they have trunk decay and cavities, um, those trees would be considered like uh, high risk trees for failure and they would not be in the calculation for replacement trees. Mm -hmm. um, observation is just your general observation. You know, does the tree have, um, does the tree have uh, um, you know, hardscape damage? Um, does it, is it, it has a buried root collar, et cetera. And primary maintenance need would be, would tell us and tell planning sustainability, you know, primary, primary maintenance need can range from removal to uh, like root invigoration. So if a developer has decided that they're going to remove three of those five trees, the primary maintenance thing would be removal. If they're planning on keeping two of the five, then they would uh, want to do, uh, you know, uh, either a, a tree clean, can a canopy clean, ground clean, or root invigoration. And the risk assessment part of this is kind of important from my perspective as an arborist, but I also think it would be helpful um, for, for folks that are reviewing the plans to clearly understand that the developer has shown up with this application and this is in the package and they have a certified arborist who has certified that there is an inherent risk of these trees failing. So we want to remove those trees. It makes it very clear to everyone involved that these trees have pre-existing issues and they possibly can fail. So I think it's important to leave that in there because it gives you a baseline set of qualifications of uh, someone who's actually going to be doing the inventory. Um, because if you're, if you're not a certified arborist, um, you really cannot make a determination uh, of whether a tree is, is a hazard or not, because hazard trees really do not exist unless they have been um, identified by someone who has done a risk assessment. So that is um, standard, um, ISA certification and industry practices, which is the ANSI, uh, ANSI A3100 um, documentation that actually governs how uh, trees are assessed, how trees are planted, how trees are cabled, et cetera. So that's why I put that back in there. I'm sorry, I'm kind of long-winded, but I just wanted to explain that to you um, because I think it's important to get this information at the very beginning. It's sort of the same principle of if a developer is gonna submit a set of plans, 
the plans are going to be designed by an architect, the building, or you're going to have um, the landscaping um, or the stormwater system is going to be designed by a civil engineer. So a tree is, in my mind, an asset, just like one of those pieces of the project. So I, I don't see why this can't be included in the very beginning. So that's why I put that back there. Mm -hmm. um, okay, any questions? No, but I agree with you. Okay. I mean, I, to be honest with you, because I, I, I have to review these plans myself, so it makes my life, just personally myself, a lot easier. But I think when you have um, industry standards applied across the board in projects like this, I think it makes it easier for even people that are not certified arborists, folks maybe on the planning board that have to review these projects to understand that, yes, there was a certified arborist that identified that, you know, the risk is inherent for failure. These trees are going to be removed. They're not going to be counted as part of the replacement calculation. You know, that's just one example. Well, I think our kind of broader effort also to enlighten all kinds of ancillary um, uh, businesses and, uh, you know, people, um, you know, all this work we've done with volcano mulching and, you know, this is similar, you know, developers need to know that uh, trees are assets and I mean we've We've worked on this with even within our own city of trying to get planning and zoning, you know, to educate them. So this is, to me, that's a key piece of, of the gravity of the value of trees. And also um, it's clear if it's, if it's in the beginning, it's in the middle, it's in the end, you know, I think it can get confusing and things could slip through because having a developer uh, evaluate their own trees, inventory their own trees. That's like a conflict of interest, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it is, in, in an essence, Jen, the other thing too is that if you are a developer or um, a contractor doing this kind of work, you're going to hire a certified arborist to work for you. So that's the arborist client relationship. <clears throat> and again, you could, people could say, well, that's a conflict of interest, but in essence, you're hiring someone who has the qualification to do this work. Um, it's just like, uh, you know, you're not going to hire an ear, nose, throat specialist to do knee surgery. So, you know, there is a level of um, industry standards that I think would um, basically say, you know, someone has signed off on this as, a, as an arborist and this is, you know, this is what they have found in, in their inventory. And I think it would just be, it actually, I think also would be helpful because I feel like a lot of times um, when these projects have come from in front of the planning board, you know, people have pushed back on why they're taking all these trees down and planning is like, well, because we have this inventory and, you know, they don't have any real defined, like this was certified by a certified arborist that this tree is, is um, high risk for failure. Yes, it is a 30 inch uh, white oak, but um, it has to be removed uh, in order to safely move along with this project. Um, so I, I also, where it says, um, as specified in the table under 350-12.3B. Uh, so if you remember, um, this used to say inventory of any significant trees, mm. but we are not, we have decided that we're not gonna be using the word significant because we're basically saying all the trees are significant in essence, but you know, identifying a significant tree as we've talked about in the past, um, significant can mean many things to many people. Um, so that's, uh, okay, so let me, everything else here is pretty much remain the same. Uh, so 350-12.3 used to say significant trees. So we um, basically identified this area as a tree protection and tree replacement. And I added the protection piece because of the fact that down low, farther down in this document, it does talk about tree protection measures. So I think it, um, and again, we're, we're not singling out any particular tree as being significant. We're just saying tree protection and replacement. So that's, um, and then uh, this was this, all this language that's in here going 
going forward is all the language from that we worked on that was in that other PDF that I sent you that was the, mm -hmm. the working draft that we all viewed at our last meeting. So I, I just encourage you to read it and please let me know if you have any questions about anything. Rich, uh, I have a question about this legislative findings and intent section. Um, in, the, in the existing uh, statute, it says uh, the city of Northampton finds that significant trees enhance air quality, comma, reduce noise, et cetera. And uh, I proposed uh, slightly different language, but focusing on uh, mitigating air pollution, lowering ambient temperatures. Um, is there a reason that that section was omitted from this? David, no, that no, there wasn't. And my apologies because I took all this information off the last working draft that we had. Yeah. And if I didn't put that in there, my apologies. Um, hmm. I, I I agree with you. That should be that should be put in there. Um, um, I could I can put it into the uh, chat if that would help. Uh, no, I prefer that you don't. I, I'd actually it'd be easier if you sent me. Uh, if you have an email that has that information, can you resend it to me? Sure. Yeah. I can cut and paste it. It would be easier. Um, you know, like a Word document or even embedded in the email, please. And then a, a separate question relates to the Sustainable Northampton Comprehensive Plan yeah. uh, from 2021. And, uh, should, should this um, subsection A refer to that plan or, or not? I mean, is that something we should discuss? That's a that is a good that is a good question. I I don't I don't really know the I don't really know the offhand I can't really answer that question probably and I can't articulate it very well but I I would think that I would say I, I would say no and the only reason I'm saying no is because the. The climate resiliency and regeneration plan that the city has um, is, you know, like the overall arching framework now for the to guide the sustainable, the future sustainable plan as they're being rolled out. I personally think under the climate resiliency and regeneration plan, there is a section there that talks about um, that talks about uh, urban trees, urban forests, etc. And and there's um, a subset that I think as the commission we we could actually work on drafting some metrices as to how to support the climate resiliency regeneration plan. Um, and I, and then that is not, we haven't, we haven't discussed that. We haven't worked on that. Um, that is something that I was, um, as the uh, working with energy and sustainability, we have been talking about working on individual pieces and parts of the climate resiliency regeneration plan. So that was, I guess I would be afraid to, to marry this document and maybe Councilor Jarrett could speak to this a little more about ordinance language, but I think I, I, I'm not sure if it would be wise to marry this document with, a, with that document without actually having um, its own subset of talking about urban trees and metrices and how to get you know, X amount of trees planted per year, et cetera. I don't know if, if Councilor Jerry wants to comment on that at all. That would, might be helpful. Bob, uh, could you state the question again? Yeah, David, would you would you mind repeating your question so Councilor Jerry could? Uh, yeah. Well, so we we've uh, in in the back and forth around these amendments. Um, there was a sentence that tied the significant tree ordinance to sustainable Northampton comprehensive plan from 2021. And um, so the question is, should the, should the amended STO refer to that sustainable Northampton comprehensive plan? Something to the effect of it's consistent with the plan. Right. Um, and so uh, I, th I think Rich has articulated a, a reason not to do that. Um, as, as opposed, yeah, as opposed to taking the pieces from that plan and putting it into the ordinance. Yeah, yeah. so what I, what I was saying is that it's sort of like you have this over, you have the, I think you're talking about the climate resiliency and regeneration plan, David. 
Well, I think isn't sustainable Northampton comprehensive plan encompasses the, the climate resilience piece, but it's not, but it, uh, it includes other. Yeah, it was all combined okay. um, or, earlier this year or last late last year. I mean, I think I think it would be okay to mention that in there, but um, but there's in the climate resiliency regeneration plan or the sustainable plan, there needs to be a subset at some point which we need to work on in the future about how we actually reach those metrics. So, and I'm not a, I'm not an expert at all in any of this, obviously, but um, the climate resili resiliency regeneration plan for me personally left a little bit to be desired about how we achieve. Um, you know, species diversity, how do we meet the metrics to get where we need to be? But I think as, as um, mentioning that in this ordinance, because it does, this ordinance basically is talking about protecting trees, which is part of our sustainable goals in the city. So I, it would probably be fine, but I think there needs to be a piece in the um, sustainable Northampton plan that specifically talks about how we get there which there kind of is, but there kind of isn't. So we're kind of like, we're, we have this tree planting initiative that we started back in 2015 in the Urban Forestry Commission, and we've kind of plotted our way along um, and we've made a plan ourselves, but it's not, um, it's not quantified in, in that large sustainable document. Excuse me, if I recall, um, I spent quite a lot of time on a document that um, Lily, I believe, submitted, um, you and Lily submitted, about all the different places that mention trees in the Sustainable Northampton and the Climate Resiliency section uh, about matrices. And um, we looked at an example from another community. And what, what happened to that and what's the process if we're going to change, if we want to impact that plan? So that's actually a good question. And I, the uh, Evansville, Evansville, Ohio, mm -hmm. or Evansville, Indiana actually was the, yeah. I'm getting that correct. They actually yeah. have a climate resiliency and regeneration plan, and they actually have a subsection of that plan that actually talks about how to reach the um, sustainable goals in the city's urban forest by providing metrics. And we did, we did send our commentary to planning sustainability was that that portion of the plan we felt was the, our plan in Northampton was weak mm. um, and it should mirror um, you know what we've seen this other community so that that is the document that I think you're referring to yeah um, I did a find through the whole thing everywhere it said tree and then with suggestions about how you correct. can pick it up well I, I think that that as Councilor Jared alluded to, that plan and Northampton Sustainable Plan kind of were merged together. So out of that plan, I believe what, my opinion, what should happen is that there should be metrics um, built or policies and procedures built out of each of one of those individual silos of how we're gonna meet that sustainable goal, whether it's through housing stock, whether it's through food waste reduction, whether it's through reduction of uh, fossil fuels, whether it's, Tree plantings. Um, so we can definitely, in your um, in the statement that you had, David, in refining this, if you want to put that back in there, or if it's in there, can you just send it to me and I can put that back in this document? If that's what, if that's okay with you. Sure, sure. Yeah, and just and just to clarify, the only reason I think it's worth reflecting on. This is on the cross reference is just because it emphasizes that tree protection is really green infrastructure. I mean, it's not just that we're not just interested in beautification efforts, but in stormwater mitigation. And I think it gives, it sort of reinforces the importance of this ordinance and what we're doing. It ties it in to yeah. the bigger picture. So the part uh, number B or letter B is stay the same. And for Councilor Jarrett's information, this table, I don't think you've ever seen this before. Um, this table was actually um, drafted by Planning and Sustainability. Um, and originally where it says URC, the, uh, the, UR, the UR zones were all 
were to stay at 20 inches or greater. Uh, and all the, um, the, the second line, the HB, uh, EB, GB, that was also 20 inches or greater. Um, and we actually have pushed back on that uh, and said that we would like to see all those uh, at 12 inches or greater. The last two, uh, 10 inch and six inch, were uh, those were originally um, submitted by Planning and Sustainability and we're okay with leaving those at that uh, level. And that's really to discourage um, you know, this type of uh, development um, in the more rural zones of the city where there's more heavily forested land. But I mean, I think given, given the fact that there seems to be very, at the moment, the incentive to think about trying to keep a, a 20 inch tree or greater um, is not really there. We felt that drawing the numbers down to the 12 inch would give uh, someone who's designing or developing a pause to think about uh, potentially designing around the existing trees or a tree grove on the property just to create a larger, you know, keep the existing green spaces there and actually make it work naturally instead of replacing it with some man-made type hardscape. So, um, section C uh, was changed by planning sustainability, if you remember, because um, they actually had within 12 months immediately prior to such a site plan. So that actually had a date in there from 2015. So um, the language is the same. Carolyn just removed the date. Uh, that's when the ordinance was, uh, I believe, first approved by city council. Uh, Rich, couldn't we just delete after? Because it would have the same meaning and it would be clearer, I think. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yep, I'll make a note of that. Can I, can I say something? Absolutely, please. Uh, anyone um, to speak? I'm just kind of going through this line. By okay. Um, well, it goes back to that section A that you were talking about with David yep. about the legislative intent. Um, maybe this is what you already were just talking about, but um, um, there was all that wording that did talk about the ecosystem services. It didn't, it didn't mention the, um, sustainable plan or anything like that, but it just, it more outlined what all the different um, reasons why trees are good, like green infrastructure. And that, I don't know that it was in our, it's in that PDF file, but it's not in here. It's in the PDF file in one of those little tiny yellow, um, those yellow, yellow boxes. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. but it has a lot, it's in the second little yellow box that has a lot of stuff in it that I think it just didn't make it into here. Okay, I, I, will, I will look into that and fix this. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so section, section B here has remained the same. That has remained the same from our last meeting. Yeah. I did a search of the whole city ordinances that are on the website and there's quite a few attachments, five attachments that have significant tree and there's a for, under affordable housing, there's the word, if we are gonna get rid of significant tree, is it important to get it out of everywhere or are we just working on one little section right now? I would think that if we're not going to call it a significant tree no longer, it would be important to ask um, that we remove them all, but it's going to require a little bit of combing, like you just said, in order to remove them. Shall I email you the places I found it when I did? I just did find significant tree. Sure. At the beginning of it yep. and then yep. they all come up um this section here which is uh this is remain the same sorry council jared i know you're reading this i apologize i'm moving it on you um number six and all the way down to e has remained the same from the existing ordinance 
That has not changed. We didn't, that was uh, that was actually part of the last time the ordinance was changed in order to um, grant people a waiver, basically, if they were going to uh, have um, uh, the uh, solar creating net zero with PV panels, et cetera. So section E is where we're actually probably had the most discussion other than the other section where the table is. So provide uh, one reply uh, for provide uh, for replacement trees according to the following standards. Uh, A replacement tree shall be non-invasive deciduous or coniferous trees as defined by the city's tree list and planting guidelines. Planted on or off site is approved as part of the site plan or administrative site plan or on any city owned property with the approval of the Office of Planning Sustainability in consultation with the city tree warden. Unless such trees are public shade trees as per MGL uh, 87 section one. So this is where the original replacement, um, it actually said replacement shall be calculated so that for each inch of diameter of breast height of removed trees, there shall be no less than half of the caliper diameter of replacement trees. So we have now taken the half out of there, um, but I don't, and we replaced it with one that was from the notes that I had from the PDF, but I'm not sure that um, if you were a developer and you were reading this, would you understand that you have to replace um, caliper to caliper inch? In other words, for a 10 inch diameter tree that you're taking out, you'd have to put 10 one inch diameter replacements. C correct. Yeah, well, what about providing an example, just like Molly did? Uh, so you, you would basically, what I'm trying to say is that I, I think that the, the language in here just needs to be cleaned up. So it basically reads that for, for every diameter, uh, for every inch of diameter of breast height of the removed trees, there shall be no less than an equal amount of diameter of replacement trees, something of that nature is probably what it should say. That's pretty clear that you have to, re so if it's a 10 inch tree, you've got to come up with either 10 inches of caliper, a replacement tree, or you have to come up with whatever the formula to replace the 10 inch tree financially. Yeah. I mean, as we talked about many times before, we would prefer if it was even more because we know that 10 one inch diameter trees do not equal one 10 inch diameter tree, but we felt like it wasn't politically feasible to, to do that, I guess. Right? Correct. And the other problem is, is that when you're trying to calculate the biomass of a tree, it takes its off the back of a napkin, it's very difficult to do it. You, you, the caliper inch replacement, I'm sorry, the DBH, um, the DBH replacement is much easier um, to figure. And that's how we figured out our formula uh, for replacement of the public shade trees. <clears throat> we actually recognize that the uh, inch for inch replacement on a public shade tree or any tree of that, with that formula we had was much larger, but we, we dialed it back because of um, how extraneous it would be for people to actually afford to um, to either you know replace the tree in kind or actually remove the tree and pay the mitigation costs. But the, what we've written in this ordinance is basically the same thing, the same metrics that applies to public shade trees. So it's it's inch for inch um, diameter at breast height. I mean, you, you would never be able to replace all the biomass of a tree. It's virtually, I mean, you have to plant um, hundreds of hundreds of uh, public shade trees. Uh, Councilor Jarrett. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the walkthrough and the explanation. Um, you know, the tension here is, is affordability versus trees. Essentially, you know, if, if we increase the costs uh, of, of the having to replace them and, and pay for that. The, the concern is, will that impact what projects can happen? Will that impact the ultimate cost of projects? Um, and so we want to try to find a balance there. And uh, we want to ideally want to find a balance where 
uh, on many sites, if there's if they're able to move the project slightly to save those trees, that there will be a financial incentive to do so. Um, <clears throat> so, um, in terms of my of the questions, um, so yeah, so this seems like a great ad addition. You know, it, it, as as Molly said, it doesn't address the actual biomass, um, but I'm curious about how quickly that biomass would be replaced. Um, and of course this doubles that I would assume to some extent, um, but I guess five, like if you're removing a 10 inch tree and you, ha you replace that with five two inch trees, that's a step ahead of 10 one inch trees, but only for a while. Um, and then eventually those one inch trees catch up because there's simply more trees. I, I'm just trying to understand Question. the math, you know, what, what is the arc of replacement? Um, I don't, I, it, it, maybe I don't need to understand that to do this ordinance, but um, I, I think just essentially doubling it is a great, is a great step. Um, and, you know, we're going to hear about that tension and need to really understand the need to need to really understand the benefits of trees and the finances uh, in order to make a decision on that tension. So I, I might be able to answer some of that. Um, so we we presently we presently have a, a, a tree mitigation calculator that we use for public shade trees, which is uh, allowable under MGL eighty seven because the tree warden can. Uh, basically design uh, tree, it, it, tree warden has a power to have um, replacement costs and the tree warden can actually ma make the replacement costs for the mitigation of the tree. So about three, I don't know how long, quite a while ago, we, we did this, we have a set of um, a public shade tree regulations that we have that are attached to all the city's trench permits. So the, the public shade tree regulations uh, specifically um, talk about tree replacement, basically caliper for, sorry, DBH inch to DBH inch. So the Urban Forestry Commission came up with a, um, a formula that replaces, uh, so if you have a tree that is 10 inch, we figured out how many uh, one inch trees would have to be uh, to replace that particular slice of DBH. And that is the formula that we presently use today. So for example, uh, a 10 inch tree, if it were to be removed, if it was a public shade tree, um, the uh, petitioner, if it, the removal was approved, would have to supply the city with 16 one inch trees. Or if the individual wanted to um, not pay for, not supply us with trees, the mitigation cost for the removal for that tree would be $1,600. And that is based on, uh, you know, the average retail price for a poke for a tree at one end is about a hundred dollars. So you just take the 16 trees uh, times 100 and you come up with the $1,600. So what we would be proposing is that we uh, would like to use the same type of formula to replace these significant, uh, sorry, um, trees, I'm sorry, I keep on significant, but the trees that are uh, on uh, within these projects. But I also recognize just what you talk about, that there's going to be a tremendous amount of tension as we, as we, we you know, as the, if the STO were to be strengthened, it would cause, would it cause developers or other projects to go offline or get scaled down to the point where it would not meet the other goals um, that the city has for, uh, you know, affordable units, um, the housing stock issues that we have presently. So um, I think that probably would be the biggest debate um, if this ordinance were to get off the ground is to actually the, the mitigation for the loss of the trees. Mm. But I, I, I don't, for me personally, a, a, a tree is a tree, whether it's in the public right away or and whether it's on private property. Maybe that's just from my standpoint as an arborist, but the trees provide the same kind of benefits in the urban area. Mm -hmm. So to value a tree because it's 20 inches or greater versus valuing a tree in the public right away that's 10 inches, um, for me, there's no difference. So I'm, I'm a proponent of actually making the scale the same for both 
um, public shade trees that we use presently and for the trees under this SDO. And, and, you know, we did, like I said, we only calculated for the trees at the four and a half feet off the ground because that was the easiest way to do it because that's the industry standard, how you measure a, a large tree. But we also realized that we were not going to capture the biomass of the whole canopy because there's a tremendous amount of bio. We're only capturing that one little piece of biomass. So it's, it's in my opinion, very reasonable to say to someone that you have to replace this 10-inch tree with 16 one-inch trees. We're not asking you to replace the biomass that is above you. And we're not asking you to replace the biomass that's below this line. We're just asking you to replace this one line because you're never going to make up that biomass loss. Um, in my opinion. Mm. So, I don't know if I articulated that correctly. Someone else can chime in. Um, Jen, you have your hand up. Yeah. Um, the other thing, just to throw in the mix, just for a piece of knowledge is, you know, trees that are not in the public right away, generally we call them setback trees. And they generally have a much uh, better environment to grow in and to um, be able to provide uh, benefits faster and grow faster just because there's less stress. They're not near the roadway and it's not as hot and various other things. So, um, you know, as far as saving trees on a piece of property that is not the trees sitting right on the street, you know, in my mind, as a professional, those are even more valuable than ones that are right in the public right away. And they have a faster chance of growing larger and providing, you know, sequestering more carbon, providing more mitigation stuff. So. Um, I'd like to reiterate for the record that we're, we're talking about a little slice and it's nowhere near the replacement of the biomass. So just to reiterate that, um, I think that it's, um, it's not fair if you're building affordable housing and you don't have trees. I mean, everyone should be have access to trees. It's an equity issue. And it's, it's important that everybody has these, these resources. And then, you know, I think it's our, our responsibility as a group not to consider the other lanes, I think our lane is the trees and that's where we're bringing in, you know, passion, expertise and advocacy and that's our job. And as far as the different sizes of trees, um, my final point would be that um, we, we put a lot of resources into an inventory of our trees and it's glaringly, you know, one of the big goals is that we need diversity of age in our canopy. And um, so these, we have a lot of very old trees that for the next generation are gonna be gone. And when you talk about protecting trees in these smaller ranges, you know that's really, really important. So I just wanted to throw that in that it's part of our goals as a city to have a, a canopy that um, now we're starting to have a lot of young trees and we have a lot of old trees, but these ones in the middle are very, very important. That's my four points. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, um, Councilor Jarrett brought up the question about the arc of like time and how long does it take for these little trees? Like, let's say you planted those 10 one inch trees to replace a 10 inch tree. How long would it actually take before they would reach the volume of a, a 10 inch tree? Do we have any, do you have any sense of, of that, Rich? So I can tell you that um, a tree really, tree needs to get to be about 20 years old, 25 years old before it starts to pack on the carbon ah. um, that's actually going to be beneficial and offset the carbon that it has mm. been needed to actually plant the tree. So, so there's, a, there's a whole carbon offset of, uh, you know, the tree, tree, the tree growing the tree, planting the tree in its new home, and then taking care of it for, the tw for 20 years. Um, and the, but I, I, I would have to look at, into some research on that. But I, I, you know, th this is a whole nother question or a whole nother way to look at this is that, you know, the large tree, the large canopy trees that we're losing now presently are actually the ones 
uh, if they're in, if they're in a, you know, fair to good condition are the ones that are doing all the heavy lifting um, in providing all the benefits in some of these uh, critical areas of the city that, um, you know, have urban heat islands, et cetera. So the more trees that are removed at that size, even though we can replace them, they're not gonna mitigate the climate issues we're having presently. And the other thing that's disconcerting to me is that um, the, average, the average age of an urban street tree now is probably only into the early 20s of its life. Mm. And that's just because of the climate that we live in. That's because of the type of de-icing agents we use. Um, it's, they, they take a beating. So I'm not saying that trees replaced on private property as part of a project will have the same type of curve, but I think that we have to look at this from the perspective that the trees that were are, that are allowed to be removed presently in, under the ordinance that we presently have, we are not getting the proper mitigation for them, irregardless. Right. I mean, half the DBH of, of, of a of a 20 inch tree is 10 inches. That's virtually nothing. Yeah. And, you know, I, I still think that our job, part of our job too, I agree with Sue, is that we have to be in this lane, but our job is to educate everyone that's interested to really understand how important it is to keep these trees in these projects and spend the time to try to uh, um, protect them and actually incorporate them in the project, including a green, including uh, other green infrastructure within that particular project. Um, so that, that's... So it, it takes a long time. So the loss of these trees will be felt for a long period of time, long after we're not on this commission any longer. Um, and I, I think it's important to try to just, it's almost like a street sign. You know, people are like, well, if people don't pay attention to the speed limit, they don't pay attention to the street sign. Let's, let, let, let's put up another sign. I'm sure they're gonna read that one and they're gonna slow down for sure. And that really never happens. Um, but the ordinance here is is crafted in such a way that you are able to actually get people's attention and say to them, look, you know, you have to look at the, you have to look at this, the trees on this parcel, just like you're going to have to look at the stormwater runoff, right. just like you have to look at the ability to put a fire line into this building, just like you have to, uh, you know, what is going to be your stormwater discharge? They're just as important. And, um, and I think it's, that's why I'm, I'm a proponent of trying to not to make it difficult for people to develop these parcels, but to make them think about, you know, the impact that they're having and how to try to save the trees that are on the piece of property and try to work with them, but also try to meet the housing stock goals uh, and also make sure that the developer wants to continue to do the project. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother dialogue that is not really in our lane, but it's part of our lane. Uh, I don't know if I answered your question, Molly, I kind of went on a little rant. Yeah, but I have a little, just to add on. So. Sure. Yeah. I totally agree with everything you're saying. And I think, so my point is that um, the fact that it takes so long for those trees to grow back is just a reason that um, it's important for us to have really strong replacement numbers. You know, that trees are basically so undervalued. You know, any tree that's over 20 years old is incredibly valuable. You know, it takes 20 years to even just get to that size. And then, um, you know, and unless it gets to that size, it's not worth much, you know? So I just think it just speaks to the need to keep the replacement um, numbers as high as we can possibly do that's, um, that, would, that people would swallow. <laughs> Less weak versus strong. Yeah. yeah. Jared, your hands up, or Alex, your hands up. Did you? Jared, please. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and feel free to call me Alex. We're, it seems like we're all on the first name yeah. basis here. Um, thank you. Thank you. I'm really valuing your expertise here uh, on this. Um, I had two questions. One is, if we uh, would you consider doing a look back at some of the recent projects um, and kind of see, okay, what would be the cost difference between our current ordinance and this proposed one? Just to, just to get something of a sense of, of you know, what we're talking. Of course, th those projects, they may have, to, in that case, may have decided to move a tree. And that's another question, you know, could, do we see in these projects that, not moving a tree, sorry, moving a house, <laughs> um, <laughs> move, moving a house to, a, to save the tree, do we see on, on a lot of, so just kind of doing a sampling of, of different projects and saying, okay, yeah, in this case, 
yeah, they could have they could have built it this way and saved the tree. And what would have been the cost difference there? Um, I'm, I'm sure that's something that perhaps we will do as it moves through the pro process. Um, but I'm curious if you you all have any interest in that. And the second question was, I'm getting I get feedback from constituents about the replacement trees being planted too close to the new buildings, and um, that you know in their their perception that those trees will damage the foundation or have to be removed at some point just because of how close they're planted. So I just wanted to make sure that that those guidelines are are specified and and accurate. Mm. So I can I can just speak to the, your first question. I think it's really great to have data. I think we live in a data driven world, and I think it's important to understand. You know, we're going to be asking someone to to abide by this potential new ordinance, but do we really? You know, I don't have an understanding. I mean, I could like again on the back of the napkin, but how much really would it cost if we had this ordinance in place um, and a look back on some of these projects? Um, which is, is really good. Um, I also think that that applies also to another topic, which is the um, infill development that we've had in the city, um, you know, which is by right uh, for most of the projects. And how much tree canopy have we lost that, you know, from that perspective? Um, because that's a different, a similar subject to this, but different because it's, it's by right construction. But it would be interesting for me to understand, and I think the commission as well, to see actually uh, how much canopy is lost and how much it costs to replace it. Um, and I think that would be something that probably would be good to have more information about that. So when we, like you suggested, when we go through this, if we, if we go through this process, we will have a better understanding of what it's going to cost. Uh, I think the more information, the better. I mean, definitely, we haven't thought about even what would it take to find out how many trees are being lost to buy right development. We see them, we hear people saying things, and then we didn't even get to the point where we sort of look at, you know, what's happened already. I don't know, how would you even go about that? Well, to speak to the first part of this, which was to understand the tree canopy that's been removed under the STO, um, the Planning Sustainability Office has details about all the trees that were removed in mitigation under the present ordinance. So you could just look at the actual um, DBH of those trees and apply, um, change the number, uh, change the deep. So if you have a project that has um, 50 inches of DBH presently, that actually means that there's a, there is more like 100 inches of DBH because remember, it's only half the replacement value. So then what you would do is you would take that 100 uh, inches of DBH and apply it to the formula that we have. And then you would basically spit out a number that would tell you how much it would cost. So that's that's something that probably could be done a little, probably pretty easily. I would just have to get the, the data from Carolyn just so we would have that for a conversation piece. Um, and to answer your question, uh, I, from my perspective, to answer your second question, um, the planting, so the um, all these projects have to follow the uh, the ANSI uh, A300 series. And uh, one of the parts, and I can't remember the number, is uh, talks extensively about tree planting. So that's where you would get the design standards um, for planting the right tree in the right place. So those replacement trees uh, are usually, I usually review all the projects that to go in front of planning under the uh, significant tree ordinance. So I actually am able to make the commentary and then I actually go out on the job and I inspect when these projects are ready to be turned over. I go out there with usually Carolyn and uh, someone from the building department and we do a, a, an on-site inspection of everything before, we, before the city signs off on the, the, the planning permit basically in the end. Great, thanks. Yeah, well, I, I just learned how to raise my hand, so I did it. I didn't know how. I was like, everyone else is doing it. I, I want to bring up something that might sound a little geeky, and and but it partly answers the questions that are swirling around here as Molly and Jarrett are trying to value the trees against development and cost. Um, the, and Rich really chimed in about um, the value of trees increasing when they're at, at around 20, 25 years. 
So there are, there are different values uh, in an urban environment of the trees. Um, and one of the big values is cooling. And the value of a tree in, in terms of cooling, I think Rich went to this lecture with me, uh, the building science people at UMass are saying, has to do with the number of leaves on the tree, uh, the amount of leaf on the tree. So getting a lot of leaves is really important um, in terms of cooling. And that would also relate to um, stormwater runoff and uh, uh, probably some other ways of looking at the tree, leaves. There's also the uh, carbon in a tree. The, carb, the amount of carbon in a tree um, is, is kind of what I think is being addressed here to some extent. Um, when, when, they're, when they're talking about trying to replace the volume of a cross section of a tree. And so the carbon um, in a tree is, is a service that the carbon sequestration is a service that the tree provides, but it's separate somewhat from the many of the services that a tree provides when it's younger even, and not absorbing a huge amount of carbon. So the trees, it kind of goes to your question, what, what are, 10 trees worth, you know, if you get 10 trees, is that like, are, are they, is 10 trees, but are 10 small trees gonna end up being better than one bigger tree if you plant as a, when you plant them? And even though it, when you measure by carbon, the bigger tree is so much more significant when you measure by other services that it provides urban services, the many small trees have a huge effect in terms of cooling and um, stormwater runoff and um, aesthetics and uh, uh, air, air quality. Air quality. I mean, there's so many things. So, and, and then I just want to, so, so, so in other words, I, I think having many little trees will have a very big effect. But I want to just speak to the carbon issue also, which is something that came up at a previous meeting, but um, Jarrett wasn't here, is that the, um, the carbon that is in a tree, even a big one, if it's, if it's, if it, losing the, that amount of carbon seems like a huge thing. And it is, it's a lot of carbon when a big tree comes down. But if you look at it in relationship to um, an infill project, the, the, the infill project can have a profound effect on lifestyle of the people who are gonna live in the infill project. That is, they might have fewer cars, they might use bicycles because it's infill. Um, they might live in row houses. So a good example is by the post office. Those are a very efficient way of living in terms of energy use, potentially, if people walk downtown. So when you lose a tree, um, you, you, you've lost, you've put a lot of carbon back into the, into, the, into the atmosphere, but when you change someone's lifestyle by having them live in an infill manner, you may, you may have had a more profound change because the average person, I believe, this is kind of like a little bit, uh, you know, I just read this somewhere, whether it's absolutely true, but uh, an American lifestyle, probably equals cutting down about three 20 inch trees a year in terms of carbon. So if you can, and there might be, you know, three people living in a townhouse. So you might have like 10 trees or eight trees come down every year, just as part of the lifestyle to support the lifestyle of carbon. So if you can change that lifestyle by cutting down some trees and having infill, you might be way ahead. So this is kind of in support of what I'll call, I, I mean, I, I know Wayne Fine has really been pushing for infill and, and it's in support of the idea of infill as a, as a potential to have a more profound effect on the overall environment in terms of carbon than the loss of some trees. So there, you're gaining something and losing something potentially. And this is why in this ordinance um, in the, more rural districts, the six inches was left as a 
six inches is proposed to include those trees because it's an effort to discourage people from taking down tr trees in, in, in more distant er areas, more, more outlying areas, and not um, raising the stakes uh, close in the infill, which is kind of counterintuitive because I think as, as everyone here, many on this commission have pointed out, it's, it seems from a sort of emotional point of view or just an intuitive point of view, that the trees closest to town are the most valuable because that's where we have fewer trees. But there's a trade-off and the trade-off is this infill concept actually having a positive ecological effect. That's my thoughts. Did anyone, anyone understand what I just said, do you think? Jen, did you? Absolutely. You yeah, okay. they're, they're, it's they're, kind of a ramble, but and it's not, you know, it's a little weedy, but I think it's profoundly important that you have to look at the different kinds of services that trees provide and, and understand that infill has an effect. Possibly. I mean, maybe it won't. Maybe people will in infill lots never never use anything, but they never ride a bicycle and they'll get. V8 engines and you know, pardon me. <laughs> There'll be nothing good will happen. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to make you all aware of the time. It's five fifty nine. So if you if folks want to continue on looking at this, and um, that's uh, entirely up to you. Are we, you know, because I, the other thing too is that David is going to send me the actual text that we should place up here. So I think if we are uh, to change the legislative findings and intent, so if we are going to approve some language uh, as a group that we like to move forward, I think we should have all the language together in one place. It's in that PDF file, in that little, in the little it, 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 yellow it, box. Okay. It, it, Thank you. I, I'll find it. I just want to make sure, though, that I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't personally want to take a vote on this until we have the whole document cleaned up in front of us. Yeah. Yeah. To move this forward, I think would be the appropriate way to do it. So, um, do folks want to continue at this meeting, or do you want to? Marilyn put in chat she has to go at six. Okay. But um, we'll, we'd still have a quorum. I'm fine. Okay. I'm chiming in if anybody else wants to chime in. Okay. Anyone else? Councilor Jarrett, Alex, sorry. Awesome. Yeah, uh, I, I, I need to go uh, as well, but this has been very helpful. I, I hope I get to come back again and feel free to reach out. I'm happy to uh, talk individually as well about any of this. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank, thank you for coming. Thank you very much. much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Bye. I think we could I think we could decide it at this meeting. I mean, basically, we want to decide about the part that's in red and we want to put that insert those words back in that paragraph. But we can see those if we look at that PDF document yep. on your um, screen yep. share. Yep, that's fine. So in, so so in red here, replacement shall be calculated. So for each inch of diameter or breast height of the removed trees, there shall be no less than an equal amount of caliper diameter of replacement trees. That's what I'm proposing. Um, so do you want to have the some caliper diameter? Okay. That's equal to the breast height is what you're saying, the DDH. Mm -hmm. So caliper is, is the measurement of nursery trees usually and DBH is measurement of existing trees. Right. And yeah. a caliper is lower to the ground, isn't it? Like just like yeah. six inches off the ground or something? Six or a foot. It depends on how big it is at the time. Those are ANSI nursery standards. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's even smaller than the equivalent of a one inch diameter tree. Yeah, because you're going to get actually if you measure at the caliper for equal replacement you're going to get less trees 
Yeah. <laughs> and I, I'm not sure why that was written like that. I'm assuming that it was written because they are um, encouraging folks to re replace trees uh, instead of actually mitigate, but that's obviously not the case. Well, it's probably written like that because if you're going to replace it, you have to buy it from a nursery and that's how they measure them. Yeah, I think that's right. It would be very odd to go in and say, I want a DBH one inch tree. Right? Yeah. Yeah, because they wouldn't think, they wouldn't classify them that way or. So if, if our intention is to replace DBH with DBH, then we should have an even higher amount of caliper. So I, I want to just point something out to you. If, if we are if we're deciding to recommend to use the same formula that we have, um for public shade trees that is all based on dbh we don't talk about caliper at all mm -hmm. so it's it's 10 inches 10 inch of dbh of existing tree requires uh 16 one inch trees we don't necessarily we don't we don't clarify whether those one inch trees are at the measure of caliper or at dbh that's that's the other thing mm -hmm. I think it's going to get too confusing to ask whoever's planting trees or buying the trees or whatever to think about DBH of a nursery tree. I, I think it's going to, I think you got to just go with, even though we know it's smaller, right? You know, caliper is going to be smaller than DBH, like at, at, the, at three and a half feet up, right? But I think I, it, those are just standards in the industry. Everybody understands that. I just think it's gonna be too hard to, that's just my own personal opinion. It's gonna be too confusing. Well, in, instead of asking them to, you know, the nursery to measure their trees in DBH, we could just say for every inch of diameter that's being removed, it has to be, uh, replaced with an inch and a half of caliper diameter or something like that. So, so the problem with that is then that messes up the whole formula. Yeah, I know. Right? So, I mean, it's a good, it's a good thought, but it, it, it messes with our formula that we uh, presently use. So, I mean, I'm all, I mean, I, I, I like Jen's suggestion. I think Jen is correct. I think it's going to require, because when, when we buy trees at a nursery, they're not measuring the DBH. Right. You know, the nursery stock list comes through. This is, you know, an inch and a half. And we just already know it's caliper. So I, I think that we need to, I, you know, I think we probably need to leave it the way it is and just say something like equal amount. Or if you have some other, another phrase you want to stick in there that would work better. I, but I'm all ears. I think the way that it's phrased there now is clear myself. What does everybody else think? So the way that I would read that if I was a lay person, sorry, I'm mm -hmm. uh, I would say there shall be no less than one inch. So basically, if I were reading that quickly, I would say, huh, they want me to replace the trees that I'm removing with a one inch caliper tree. Right. That's how I would read it. Maybe but it says for each inch of diameter, to be removed. So for each inch, you have to replace another inch. I don't know. I don't, that sounds clear to me, but I'm happy to have it changed if there's a way to make it clearer. Uh, maybe the idea of putting in an example, like David said, for example, a 10 inch tree removed shall be replaced with 10 one inch caliper trees. Or five. Two inch caliper. Tree. Yes. yes. Okay. Two, so two uh, five inch would yeah. be clear because then it shows there's a formula you can adjust. Yeah, no, I think we should just put the example in. That would make it clear. That's the problem. You can adjust it once it becomes ordinance. It's not very easily adjustable. No, no. By adjust, I meant that people realize that they can buy a bunch of one inch trees, or they can buy two five inch trees. They could buy two, two, you know, two five inch trees, five two inch trees. Right, but but which is fine, but once you, it's like putting, it's like having um, an ordinance when you actually say that you you know you cannot roll through that stop sign. If you do, you will get fine X. 
Uh -huh. So if you put an example in there, whoever is actually responsible for um, enforcing this with some developer, the developer is going to say, well, the example says this, but you're telling me I have to replace it with this. And the reason that is, is because you want the flexibility to be able to um, increase the replacement value as time goes on or maybe decrease it. Well, um, we're not putting a, a value. We're just putting, we're just showing them that you can do it in different multiples. Well, then, th then someone could, if you could make some language for that and send it to me, that would be fine. I'll look at it. I'll, I just don't like, I don't like putting, I don't like putting something in there that's concrete that's going to marry one thing to the, to the other. So right now, for example, the public safety regulations, um, the replacement values are, we can control what the replacement value is. I can change the formula anytime that I would like. So this is why, for example, in this document, there doesn't talk about what the caliper, the dollar amount per inch replacement is. Yeah. So I'm just cautious about putting in any example that might give someone. Um, but go ahead. It's just an example on how to do the math. It's not okay. any more or less concrete than what you already have in red. It's just to explain it to people who, uh, to clarify like what the stuff in red means. It seems like if you're going to change what you have in red, you just change the example to go with it. That's fine. If you can come up with the example and send it to me, that would be great. Okay. I I agree with Rich. I think no less than is kind of like it's not a double negative, but it kind of seems like one. You know, it's like wait a second, no less. Than. All right, how about at least then? So I would I think <laughs> equal <laughs> amount of in caliper diameter. Of replacement tree. I mean, that's like to yes. me, it's super clear. You have this much DBH, you have to replace it with this much caliper. Yeah. Yeah. Equal. I think I I think equal amount, like scrap the one inch, blah, 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 you know. So how would you word that, Jen? Uh replacements. Let me see. Hold on. I gotta reduce the thing here. A uh, replacement shall be calculated so that for each inch of diameter at breast height of the removed trees, there shall be equal oh caliper I, I have a diameter I have a of replacement trees. And you have trees there, so you know it means multiple trees. It's so equal, equal caliper of replacement trees e equal caliper inches of replacement i don't know i think equal caliper of replacement trees seems okay to me because caliper is in inches like that if you know any you know whoever's buying the trees is going to know that calipers that's just it's always in inches so re Placement. I, I, I'm putting something in the chat as a proposed wording. Uh, please, Thanks, Molly. Don't. No? No, just please don't well, put it in the chat because I can't capture all the chat. Okay, okay. I a public record and I didn't turn it off. I think, um, like, what sort of what Jen was saying, but if you, a simpler way of just making it sound, um, um, less wordy is just take out the four that each inch of calip uh, each inch of diameter at breast height of the replaced tree shall be replaced by an inch of caliper diameter tree yeah that's good Replace. just take out the four it makes makes yeah. it simpler i think you need to keep replacement tree though instead of just tree yeah that's yeah yeah of replacement okay yeah okay Get that rich yeah so are you I'm, I'm not writing notes actively uh, Sue, did you capture that okay replacements plural shall be calculated so that each inch diameter at breast height inch of diameter each inch of diameter of diameter at breast height um then does it go of, of the removed tree Okay, of the removed 
Tree. Should it be tree slash S? Trees. Yeah, trees. Um, there, and so um, diameter at breast height of the removed trees, there shall be equal. Shall, shall be shall be replaced by. Okay. By equal caliper of. Yeah, replacement of replacement trees. trees. Yeah. You're eliminating diameter, correct? Only we have that referring to the removed trees. Right. But in the replacement trees, you're removing mm -hmm. diameter. Yeah. I'll so read it. Replacements shall be calculated so that each inch of diameter at breast height of the removed tree slash S shall be replaced by equal caliper of replacement trees. Yep. And equal I'll, equal I'll, caliper equal caliper inches. Caliper inches. Thank you. Yeah. I think that's clear. All right. Emailing to Rich. Thank you. And um, for the B section that comes after that, it says a minimum of one inch caliper diameter. Do we have a maximum caliper diameter that we want? Like Rich, you said it's not good to put in. Um, like large replacement trees because they don't survive very well. We, we do not. And the reason we uh, encourage one inch trees because we were originally thinking that a lot of like the bean, uh, the growth, we're trying to encourage the thought about using either bare root stock or uh, grow bags as a replacement for Because they originally had replacement trees have a minimum of, of uh, two two and a half inches, two and a half inch caliper diameter, and so everything they got was B and B. Yeah, right. So we we lowered it so they could actually in, encourage them to use different types of growing medium. But I'm asking, do we also want to have a maximum per individual replacement tree, a maximum size to keep it under that two and a half inches? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I mean, you tend, figuratively speaking, you could actually, you could create a bare root, a very large bare root tree, you know, that's two and a half inches in DBH. It probably won't be, it will be very difficult to transplant. If it's mm. Okay. I, I don't know, like from a tree steward protect, you know, yeah. You and Jen would know better, like which if there's a limit to if you plant a tree over a certain size, if it's just not going to make it. Anybody seen those pictures of that private park in Russia where they move mature trees? Hmm. No. Uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, my gut feeling is this is just total gut reaction is to leave it the way it is because so it's again like this is kind of what Rich was saying earlier about you can't change it once it's in an ordinance and you know that like what if there's some newer technology or some you know that we don't even know about yet and um, you know if I was a developer I would look at that and say jam I can put in some one inch trees you know <laughs> they're a heck of a lot cheaper you know than a ball of burlap tree for example mm -hmm. you know so I, I'm just, just my gut feeling is I'm a little um, resistant to putting an upper limit just because it's going to be really, we're using an upper limit to our knowledge at this point rather than That's potentially, true. Grow, right. you know. Yeah, and it's really unlikely. I haven't seen any developers showing up with giant trees. I mean, the crazy <laughs> Russian guy with the lake he took the trees across the lake, right? Is that the, yeah, I mean, that's. It's in, I just looked it up. I'll send it to people. They're, they're it, moving these enormous trees. It used to happen in, when I lived in the South, when I lived in North Carolina, these, uh, you know, huge hotels and stuff, motel, they want resorty places just would bring in these massive. Oh God. You know, um, it, it was, it was like crazy. But anyway, um, I haven't seen that in the northeast but i mean i'm sure it happened somewhere but you know it costs so much money to do that it's like insane it's, yeah 
it's pretty cost prohibitive. Yeah. Are we good on this red section now? I, I think so. Sue, Sue's going to send me the. the yep, I sent it. Okay, good. Thank um, you. Rich, if you if you allow me to do screen share, I'll take you right to that PDF document and read I, out. I, I have I have it. I have it okay. out here. Okay. Can you see that? Yep. Scroll down. Okay. Stop. Go back up. Okay. Right. Yeah. That one of those boxes in the A. Um, in the A paragraph, it's either that one, that one right there. There are the, there are the words right there. Replace trees in which uh, with urban forest flood ecosystem services benefit all residents, such as mitigating air. I must have missed that. My apologies. Yeah, it's easy to miss. It's just in a little yellow box. Okay. So I can, if everyone's okay with that, I'll put that into this document. Yeah. Okay. All right. So given that, can we vote on it now or do you still want to wait till next time? Uh, so we, I just want to go down. I just want to go down a little more. So the yellow right here is just an addition because it just said warden. Uh, to that tree warden. Mm -hmm. um, trees, uh, F is all good. I think that's the actually end of the backlog. So you protected area, critical root zone. Um, and then all these other ones are already in the existing ordinance. One mm -hmm. thing I do, so one thing that we haven't really talked about, and, and we're not going to be responsible for enforcing this, this is all up to planning sustainability, but um, under back up here under section E, uh, number two, if you're not going to be replacing the trees in kind, you have to pay yeah. funds to the city for tree replacement, you have to pay funds to the city for a tree replacement fund to the city for a tree replacement fund account that in the planning board's estimate will be allow the city to plant new shade trees on city property in accordance with the above formula. So it, it mentions the formula that's up here in the red that we've just changed. Mm -hmm. This does not talk about the actual um, fee. The, the fee that has to be paid. And I think that that needs to stay out of here because that needs to be adjustable. Yeah, Okay. sure, that makes sense. So then this this conversation about how we're, you know, the, the how the, what the fee will be, will be a conversation that we would have with planning and sustainability. Because again, they're responsible for enforcing this, but I mean, I personally think the fee should be the same as what we're doing for public shade trees. Yeah. But I will be truthful with you, we'll get a lot of pushback on that because of the fact that it's going to be so uh, expensive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not, not only are we saying you have to replace basically all the diameter at breast height now, now you have to pay X, this X amount of dollars because this, this number two right here presently is based on $90 per caliper inch. I'm sorry, not $90 uh, at diameter at breast height for every one inch, it's $90 for replacement. Mm -hmm. so so for for a, for a 10 inch tree for a 10 inch tree under um this system um they would have to replace uh, if in, under the new for under the if we change the formula for inch per inch replacement a 10 inch tree under the planning mm -hmm. the planning department's monetary estimate would be um 90 900 dollars for a 10 inch tree under our Current rules and regulations for public shade trees, that same tree would be sixteen hundred dollars. So that, that doesn't seem like a huge amount for a developer. Well, it well, is you have 20 it trees. Is, right. Until you have to remove like 50 trees that are 10 inches because you got you're trying to site uh, multiple house, multiple homes. Well, if but if you're removing that is a lot of trees to remove. Think about it. That's a lot of trees to take out. If you're taking out that many trees, I think it is worth that much money because it's a lot of trees to take out. It's the one thing to take out two or three maybe, but to take out 20 trees is like, wow, that's a lot. Uh, Rich, I, 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 I have a thought about this, which is probably like throwing this out now is probably at the wrong time. It's late, but... I was noticing um, 
someone's cleaning up the lot at um, the Honda, former Honda dealer on King Street. And I think that's where you, Molly, mentioned there were some Ilantha trees. Um, no? No, not at that place. Well, anyway, they were tearing up a lot of uh, um, what were probably both Norway maples and Ilantha trees, and they left one nice tree, which was a London plane tree. Wow. So are people having to, I mean, if you're unfortunate enough to have a lot that's got a bunch of Norway maples on it, especially ones that, that self-seeded along a fence line are all messed up, I don't know, charging people a lot of money to get rid of them when, when uh, some people might think they should be cut down as a gift to the city. Mm. Just questioning that, whether well, invasive, in other words, are invasive species also? Yeah, I wondered about that too. Is there discretion at any point when it you have undesirable trees? Good no, point. This ordinance doesn't cover invasive trees. Right. Well, I'm just thinking about when I look at a lot of really scraggly lots, they've got often really nasty looking trees. But, Nobody wants. But. but don't forget, we're only talking trees over 12 inches for yeah. downtown. Yeah. Right. So, we, you know, we've made the ordinance very, we've reduced the DBH, we've changed the calculation at um, diameter of breast height to be 100% basically. And then we're going to increase the amount, the dollar amount. So I, I'll be honest with you, I, I, we're going to, some, some, well, somewhere on this document, we'd have to give because I think that it's not gonna be financially tenable for a developer to actually, if we pass this ordinance as we would like to see it written. I, and then of course, it's not my bailiwick, I get that. But I'm just also thinking about the other conversation piece because that's what's gonna happen. That's the pushback we're gonna get from planning sustainability that we have, we're making it so difficult for developers that they won't do the work. So this, portion of the, where it says that pay into a, um, the uh, replacement tree fund, that's gonna be something that's gonna be like a conversation um, that won't be within this ordinance. That will be a dollar amount that's designed by planning sustainability. Maybe with our input, maybe yeah. not, I don't know. That could be the huge loophole in this whole thing. If they just yeah. put a really low value, well then anybody well, yeah. will I mean, do I that. Guess that say it's a dollar an inch. Yeah. Right? Instead of 90. Right, right. But so th that's the only thing I was bringing up about that. Other than that, that's all I um, in, in terms of that sentence, there's just one little wording thing that needs to be changed. It should say pay into the tree fund account and amount that blah, 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 blah. It, this makes it sound like the account itself is what the planning board is estimating. We want to say pay funds to the city for a tree replacement um, into a tree replacement fund and amount that. So pay funds to the city. Instead of actually, instead of account, it should say an amount. Well, it, it meant so it you, I think the account has to stay in there because there's a specific account that this money sits in. Okay. Then it should maybe fund account is repetitive. It could just say pay an amount um, into uh, pay, pay funds money. to the city um, for a tree replacement account an amount that blah, 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 blah. It's a, it's a minor point. We don't have to do that. So a tree, tree replacement fund account is like describing what the, what it is. Okay. So that's then let's just say that will allow the city to plan. Okay. Yeah, I think it's okay, Molly. Okay, okay. Let's just leave it. It's fine. All right. So the other thing that I, before we vote on this, um, I, I just wanted to Sue Sue sent me an email that has um, the other sections of the city ordinance that talks about significant trees. Uh -huh. I haven't had a chance to look at that. So before we vote on this thing, do you want to review all that other language as well? Um, I have a suggestion. Could 
Would yeah. people feel comfortable saying that we would vote on the changes discussed here and um, we, that we all agree to change, to remove the word significant from any, all parts of the ordinances and replace with whatever we came up with, tree, mm. just tree, right. Mm. I mean, could, can we do it that way without having to go through each one of them? Because it's just the word, that's all it's about is one word, the, the word. Yep, sure, sure, why not? And then you can also make, somebody can make a motion to um, accept, accept the document as written with the edit that I'm gonna add um, up in the uh, legislative findings section. Uh -huh. So basically you're giving one of us, Sue or myself, the power to change this document based upon the conversation that we have had in the meeting. Is what yes. I would be looking for. And yep. the other sections of ordinance that they submit again. Okay, so you want somebody to propose to propose a um, a movement? Yes, a motion. All right, I'll take a stab at it. Um, I move else, that. Does anyone one Does anyone else have any other comment, David? I I, I guess I, I'm just wondering what's what's the harm in just allowing Rich to come up with a clean draft and voting on it first thing next meeting. <laughs> As long as we don't have to go over it all, all over again. I, I would be in, in favor of that because um, I just think it's inevitable that there will be slight discrepancies that will prove to be significant. Yeah. Um, I'm fine with that as well. I think there's going to be a lot of discussion about this when we're done with it. So I think we'll have plenty of time to discuss with people our recommended draft so i think if we wait one more meeting we'll be fine okay but molly i do admire your <laughs> to get it molly's done. like i want That's this it. to be done with i'm <laughs> i think we've it's like beating a dead horse i just feel yeah. like all right already we have a lot of other things we'd rather talk about and this only affects certain portion of trees okay so we'll we'll table that idea for a motion and we will Take this up at our next meeting will be on the agenda with a clean version and i will uh, run this back to you so you can all read it please proofread it so in case i've missed something um just send me an email and i'll put it back in there all right i'm going to stop my screen share then Everyone's all set. that sounds good all right sorry it's been a long meeting um but an important very important meeting so uh i on the agenda i had Spot a lantern fly, Molly. Next meeting. Okay. Uh, future UFC meeting dates and time. So I quickly, I just, um, this would probably be for a longer discussion at our next meeting, but I'm not, I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to make the next April, this, this next month's meeting just because of the heavy volume of stuff that I have going on between work and home. So we may, we, if it's all right with you, I'd like to have our next meeting the first of April, the first week in April. Uh, sorry, first week in May. If that works with everyone. And then oh, just can... skip skip the second one in April. Yeah, April. Yeah, yeah. we're all you know with Arbor Day and yeah, I, we I, did that I, last year. Yeah, okay. I think that's totally reasonable. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to add to that that during planting season, which which we plant on Wednesdays, it really makes my Wednesday very crowded. So. Um, so ha going to once a month during planting season would be, and we can discuss that further, but th th it would be really, really, really good for me. Um, and I guess it's not time to discuss that, but I want everyone to be thinking of whether we could do that generally. Yeah, that's fine. I'll make sure it's on the, the next agenda along with the SDO and a clean draft that we can just say yes, vote yes, and that's it. Uh, anyone else have any other business not anticipated by the chair they want to discuss at this time? No, but on the next agenda, I think yeah. we should put something about um, looking for a replacement for Marilyn's position. I forget exactly when she comes off. The end of June. 
Okay, so I think we should start, you know, talking with Christina okay. at some point, you know, before Marilyn comes off. Okay, all right, yep. I will make that an agenda item. Uh, anything, anyone else? I, I know, I see Nate, I see your picture there. I hope you don't have a headache. <laughs> uh, oh. Um, I want to ride in that vehicle. Yeah, I know. Huh? I'm ready to go. Let's go. <laughs> oh, not a headache at all. Super interesting. And I'm here writing down everything. This is the first public meeting I've been to. And I think you guys are doing great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And thanks for thanks for coming. And we will be meeting again at the beginning of May if you're interested for a follow up meeting. So shoot me an email. Uh, if you're interested, I'll send you the link. Can I Excellent. also you. invite you to um, Join us in planting trees anytime. We do a lot of tree planting. We're just launching the season. And um, there's an organization, Tree Northampton, with the website treenorthampton.org. And that organization is formed to um, support the tree planting program of the city. And there's a form, sign up to be a volunteer and just fill that out. And we'd love to have you join us. I um I move that we adjourn the meeting. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Deb. Thank you, Deb. Thank you guys. Thanks, Deb. Thanks, Deb. Nice to meet you, Nate.